Uh, so, sir, my first question is that how common the rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease was in 1960s and 70s? I remember my undergraduate days. I joined medical school in 1960. In the 1960 to 1969, I was an undergraduate student and a postgraduate student. The cardiology department, main patients were all chronic rheumatic heart disease or acute rheumatic fever. The pediatric department, pediatric cardiology itself, it is not a cardinal heart disease that is coming forwards. It is all the rheumatic heart disease, even though we had a sprinkling of cardinal heart disease coming in. And in the medical wards, you find the rheumatic heart disease formed nearly 70% of cardiac admissions, okay. chronic rheumatic heart disease. And every week, we used to have at least about three patients admitted with acute rheumatic fever. So you can, you can ex imagine the very high density of population in Kerala. Right, sir. Very high density very of population high. in Kerala. And the very high incidence of acute rheumatic fever and consequently the chronic rheumatic heart disease. Above all that, we had at least about four <coughs> postgraduate theses on juvenile rheumatic heart disease rheumatic mitral stenosis as well as mitral regurgitation, right. especially mitral stenosis in the juvenile age group. There are many postgraduate theses which uh, literally tells you how frequent it was. Sir, uh, sir how rare it is in uh, 2014? The picture has radically changed. What? In 2014, after so many years in medical profession, you find you don't have even enough patients to conduct a postgraduate examination. Okay. On an average, every month, we probably admit hardly one patient with chromatic, chronic rheumatic heart disease. Outpatient department, we see about, uh, about uh, uh, 200 to 300 patients every month, out of which about four person forms chronic rheumatic heart disease. Acute rheumatic fever, even in the nearby general hospital, medical college hospital, where I have friends, I ask them, how often do you see acute rheumatic fever? Or oh, probably one or not on a month, on a month. It's, uh, for the last one year, I have seen in my hospital only one patient with acute rheumatic fever. It has become a rarity. And that's why I always call it a success story. Okay. Uh, so, sir, how did uh, this success was achieved over these three, four decades? It's the social changes okay. as well as the nutritional changes that has happened. Social changes is the very high literacy rate of the parents. Parents have become very, very, very touchy about the child getting a sore throat. If the child gets a sore throat, they get go to a doctor or get treated immediately. Right, sir. So sore throat is literally being eradicated or properly treated. So sore throat has become a, itself has, the, the, the incidence of sore throat is there, but prompt treatment comes in. So it's the education of the parents that has helped and children also reports that sore throat very early. Even the teachers have found the child has a sore throat Sends a knock to the parent. This child has a sore throat. Right. Yeah, keep him away from school at least for two, three days and get treatment for this. So rheumatic fever has become a rarity. And consequently, and this become a rarity probably for the last 20, 30 years. And consequently, today we find chronic rheumatic heart disease has also become rare. Thanks to the governmental measures also. The public health centers, as well as the district hospitals, they have all become very touchy about treating early diagnosis and treatment of sore throat. So it's a community achievement, it's a governmental achievement, achievement of the private hospitals and practitioners. Uh, so has any new disease come up? Uh, it's, this? it's absolutely surprising that with the disappearance of rheumatic fever, we find an increasing incidence of Kawasaki disease in the pediatric aid group. Okay. And Kawasaki was unknown. I saw my first Kawasaki case in 1985 after going to Kuwait. Never seen a single Kawasaki in India. But today, if you go to the pediatric wards, 
on a given day, you may find one or two patients admitted with Kawasaki disease. On an average, every month, you may find at least about two or three patients diagnosed with Kawasaki disease. So, request for echocardiogram, looking for coronary artery abnormalities have become a regular practice in the pediatric wards. So, Kawasaki is invading the, 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 the Kerala scenario in the pediatric wards and we do really do not know the reason. Very ignorant. So, beside ISD, any other disease that disappeared from the Kerala during this phase? That is my favorite disease, <laughs> endomyocardial fibrosis. Okay. In 1960s and 70s, it was first diagnosed in Trivandrum in 1962 during my undergraduate days by my professor, Professor Sika Gobi. And we had about 2.5% about 2 of all cardiac admissions used to be endomyocardial fibrosis. Today, EMF has become a rarity. Last 10 years, we have diagnosed only 16 cases of endomyocardial fibrosis in Trivandrum, in spite of my personal interest in the disease. So that disease has disappeared mainly because of eradication of whale infestations, eosinophilia, and consequent damage that may happen to the endocardium of the muscle. So that disease has disappeared because of remarkable improvement of nutritional standards and improvement of public health standards. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts and views about the rheumatic fever. Thank, Thank you for bringing, and bringing out this very interesting topic about which we had a couple of posters yesterday. Thank you.